My name's Scott Hebbard from Spark Systems and today we're going to discuss how to use the project management features that are available within Enterprise Architect. On screen we have a series of requirements for an online bookstore. Assuming the role of a project manager, I would like to assign additional resources in order to complete the project on time and on budget. In order to identify which staff have been assigned to a given task, simply open the project management window. The project management window provides a convenient and simple interface for reviewing and assigning resources. Select an element such as a Manage User Accounts requirement. A single developer called Jane has been assigned to complete the task of implementing this requirement. However, given the complex nature of this task, we also need to assign a database administrator and a security specialist to ensure successful project outcomes. To assign additional staff resources, click on the New button. Then you can use a drop down list to assign a staff resource and corresponding role. The convenient drop down list make it easy to select the start and end date for each task. You can enter details such as the expected time, in this instance about 67 hours. This data can be used by the project manager for estimation and costing purposes. The detailed description and history is very important as it allows team members to share information and collaborate on a shared task. This information can also be reviewed by the project manager to identify any key milestones or problems that have been encountered. I've now assigned three different resources to complete the Manage User Accounts requirement. The DBA, Developer and Security Specialist will see these tasks appear in their Personal Task window. As a Project Manager, if I open my Personal Task window, I'll see a custom list of tasks that need to be completed. They are now shown on screen. Every member of the team will have their own unique list of tasks that need to be completed. This will help people to better manage their workloads on a daily basis. Assuming the role of a project manager, I now need to examine the project as a whole. To switch to the GAN view, simply use the diagram context menu. The GAN view illustrates a project schedule by showing the start and finish dates of assigned resources while the status bars allow the project manager to quickly review the current status of a project. There are four different GAN views available within Enterprise Architect. The Diagram GAN view, Personal Tasks, Project GAN view and the Package Browser GAN view. It's important to understand how each of these can be used. I can get a quick view of any project slippage by toggling the highlight option for overdue items. This option is available from the Gantt context menu. The red highlights make it easy to identify any problems that may cause project delays allowing you to take immediate corrective action. Even when a project spans over many months, you can move around the timeline with ease to jump between today's date, the start date and end dates. Simply select the appropriate task and then use the context menu to display the end date or the start date or today's date in the centre of the screen. The left hand side of the Gantt chart lists the element name, the status, the role and a column to show how complete each task is. Each column has an active filter to quickly locate a given task. For example, I could search for all tasks that are less than 15% complete that have been undertaken by a database administrator. I can then use the project management window to assign additional resources and take corrective action if required. I can also use model mail to communicate with staff to rectify problems early. I can insert links to specific model elements so that staff understand what I'm talking about. This allows me to pinpoint problems and to facilitate communication with staff to quickly rectify problems and avoid potential project delays.
We shall now examine how to use the gap analysis matrix to assist with project planning and resource allocation. We've used Enterprise Architect to model how customers pay for books in our bookstore. This diagram represents our current or as-is state. Customers can use cash, check or electronic funds transfer to pay for their books. With the creation of our online bookstore, we need to accept other forms of payment. So we've modelled our future state as shown in this diagram. The gap analysis matrix is a tool used to analyse model artefacts for potential gaps in solutions. This allows you to then model any gaps in the repository. In this example, we're going to model some requirements. Let's have a look at the gap analysis matrix now. You'll note that I've mapped the target architecture to our future package, while the baseline architecture points to our current package. You can use filters in order to display certain elements. However, in this example, I've left both filters blank. I've saved the profile, allowing it to be reused at a later date, and I've instructed Enterprise Architect to record any gap as a requirement. Enterprise Architect has automatically identified two gaps in my model. In order to create a gap element, I simply use the context menu and then select an appropriate package to save my gap elements, which in this example happen to be requirements. Enterprise Architect will then automatically prompt me to enter the properties for my requirement. In this particular example, I'm going to create a mandatory requirement for processing online PayPal payments. You'll note that this requirement then appears in the project browser under the gap package. I'm now going to repeat this process. In order to process an online customer, we need to have an online customer portal. So I'm going to create a requirement to create that portal. Now both of these elements are available within the project browser. I can now view the package browser as a Gantt view so I can see these elements in a format where I can use the project management window in order to assign resources to ensure that they get completed on time and on budget. Before I handle my PayPal payment system, I need to create the customer portal first. So what I can do is I can use the control key to zoom out and I can move all of these tasks so that they do not begin until after the customer portal is completed. This allows me to properly manage any dependencies within my model, which is great for project planning. To sum up, today we've discussed project management within Enterprise Architect. We've looked at the Gantt view and a number of different techniques for accessing the Gantt view, including the Project Gantt, Personal Task Window, the Package Browser, and right-clicking on the diagram. We've also looked at how Enterprise Architect can be used to manage workloads, including the ability to highlight overdue tasks and to use filters to quickly find a task that's relevant to you. We've also looked at the gap analysis matrix and seen how to automatically create gap elements and then assign resources accordingly. For more information on project management or to download a free trial of Enterprise Architect, please visit www.sparksystems.com.